Bismillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-mustafa Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to minor signs of the day of resurrection or the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah and today bi idni subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be talking about minor signs that happened in the past happening nowadays and some of them may continue in the future first of the minor signs that happened in the past may happen in the future is kathrat al-mal abundance of wealth where would be a time or it happened was a time when the wealth was everywhere and almost every Muslim was rich to the point that nobody will find a faqir to accept a sadaqah or a zakah at the time of the sahaba it happened when Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu was a khalifa and the empire or the Persian empire was destroyed or the Muslims conquered them and the Roman Empire also Muslim conquered them they received so much wealth so much so that the people would not take wealth would not take gold would not take silver a man would come with a handful of gold and silver and will walk through the streets of the city looking for miskeen who would accept them and everybody will say, no, thank you very much. I have no need of for wealth. And some of them that were said, I needed yesterday. You are a day behind, you date one day late. Today I have no need for wealth. And this is subhanAllah, it happened in the past. Also after Umar bin Khattab, when Umar bin Abdul Aziz became a Khalifa, he became a Khalifa and his Khilafa only lasted a bit over two years. And I would encourage everyone to read the biography of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. When he became a Khalifa, he went to the Bayt Mal al Muslimin, which was the bank of the government. This was a bank that belonged to the state. And he gave everything in the bank to the fuqara, to the needy people. And then everybody became rich, wealthy. And then when the sadaqat and zakah comes to the Bayt al-Mal, because now everybody is rich, everybody is rich. Because Umar bin Abdul Aziz gave everyone enough to make them rich. And this is what the socialists and the people who are trying to create balanced society don't understand. If we give what Allah ordered us to give, like zakah, give what we have in the Bayt al-Mal, to the Muslims, to the needy people, these needy people will become rich, self-sufficient individuals, and they themselves will bring money back to the Bayt because everybody has to pay zakah, everybody has to pay sadaqah. And then the Bayt al-Mal will become more wealthier than ever before. And that's what Ali bin Abi Talib used to say. If wealthy people give this zakat to the proper channel, no one, no Muslim would ever be poor or in need. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he received more sadaqat, more zakat. And then the treasurer of the government, of the state, he wrote him a letter and said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, or the ruler, or the commander of the faithful. The house is full of gold and silver and money, and we don't know what to do with them. Umar bin Abdul Aziz said, announce to the people that anyone who's in debt, Bayt al-Mal will pay on his behalf. So people came and they say, I also saw this amount of money, so the Bayt al-Mal will issue him amount of money. And then a lot of wealth remained still with the government. So the treasurer again, he wrote him and he says, we have more money. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz says, announce to the people, if any slave wants to be free, the Muslim state, 
the government will give him the money, purchase himself from his master, and be free individual, Muslim or Kafir. Because Islam came to free people, not to enslave them. As Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu said, he said, when did you enslave people when their mothers gave them birth to them as free individuals? So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, let every slave who wants to be free come and we will give him the money to free himself with. Ajib. Then again, another letter comes to him. We still have a lot more money. Then Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said to the people, announce to the Ummah that any young man, any single person who wants to get married, his wedding expenses, his wedding expenses is on the Bayt al-Mal. Imagine a man wants to get married, he doesn't have a house, he cannot afford to pay a dowry, he doesn't have what, uh, furniture for his house, he doesn't have enough money for the walima, and then he goes to the state, goes to the government, and the government says, MashaAllah, you want to get married? You want to protect yourself from haram? You don't want to fall into zina? You want to be a decent Muslim? We will pay for all expenses that comes from your wedding. Get married. So they did this, and of course, people were already rich. Only a few people came. So everybody now got married. And again, he wrote him a letter and he says, we still have a lot of wealth. What should we do with it? He says, subhanAllah, what can I do? What can I say? How cool can I give the money to? Nobody wants to take the money. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi, ma al-faqr akhsha alaykum. He said, Wallahi, I don't fear poverty. For you, I don't fear poverty. I don't fear that you will go through poverty and you will die out of hunger. What I fear for you is, he said, that this dunya will open its gates and then you will compete with one another and then you will miss the purpose of your existence and then you will hate one another and you will kill one another and you will fight one another. And this is when the poverty comes here, ikhwati fillah. In this country, for example, you have a small portion of people who are so wealthy, so wealthy, that if they live 100 years or 200 years, they would never go hungry one day. Where on the other hand, you have Muslims, non-Muslims, people who are sleeping on the streets, don't have anything. So it's not the absence of wealth that is creating this mis this uh, issues. It's the mismanagement of the wealth. That's why in Islamic State, alhamdulillah, all the zakah, all the sadaqat, all that comes to one central bank, and that bank disperses it in a way that is balanced, and all every Muslim and all Muslims are well taken care of. And this is how subhanallah the Islamic system lives or exists. Now, of course, when the balance is tipped off and that is, the system is missing, then you will see all the problems that you're witnessing today. After this break, inshallah, we will talk about something that we can really also touch and feel it in our daily lives. So don't go anywhere be idni Allah. We will be back right after this messages be idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we stay tuned be idni. Wassalamu alaikum. Bismillahi wa kafa. Salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al Mustafa, Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The next sign from the sign, the minor signs of the day of resurrection is imitating the non-Muslim. Imitating 
other than Muslims, imitating the Nasara, the Yahud, other than that. In Sahih al-Bukhari, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yawm al-Qiyamah will not come until my Ummah, my nation, follow the footsteps of the nations before them. Hand span by hand span, arm span or arm length by arm length. Now, the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, are you talking about the people of Al Furs and Ru, Persian and the Romans? In another narration, they said, Are you talking about the Yahud and the Christians? And then the Messenger of Allah said, Who else? In this, Rasulullah is telling us, we will leave our sunnah, the sunnah of our Islam. We will leave the teachings of the Sharia. And Muslims will follow the footsteps of the kuffar. In another narration, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if they enter a lizard hole, you will enter same lizard hole. In another hadith, the Messenger of Allah says, if one of them commits zina, he sleeps with his own mother, one of you would do exactly the same thing. Subhanallah. We will follow them step by step, and we don't follow them in doing khair, we will follow them in doing evil, not in righteousness, not in good things. No, we will follow them in doing bad things. And what we don't realize is no matter how much we try to imitate them, live lifestyle similar to their lifestyle, talk like them, eat like them, behave like them, you know, they will never be happy with you and I because they see you as a follower. And teachers, masters, chiefs, and the people of higher authority, they will always see those who will follow them and imitate them less than them. That's why Allah said in the Quran, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ he said, the Jew and the Christian will never be pleased with you until O oh, Muhammad and Muslims, until you follow their footsteps. But look at the word that Allah used. He said, Hatta tattabi' until you follow ittiba'. Ittiba' means you walk behind that person. You walk behind it. You you never surpass that person because you taba. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said to Khidr, Hal attabi'uk. Look at the word, exact the same word. Hal attabi'uk. Ala an tu'allimani mimma ullimta. He said, Shall I follow you so you may teach me what Allah has blessed you with? Look. Ittaba' means you become the servant of that person. Musa is saying, I'll be your student. I'll carry your books. I'll cook for you. I'll carry your shoes. Yeah, and this is what a student of knowledge said. This is not exactly what Musa said, but this is what a student of knowledge would do for his teacher. It will become a taba'. Muslims must understand the Nasara, the Christian and the Jews will never be pleased with you until you become their followers. And subhanallah, not only Christian and Jew, but in other faiths too. Now as Muslims, unfortunately, we want our children to speak like them, to be educated like them. Sometimes our weddings, yani some of the non-Muslim Rituals be, is being adapted by Muslims. Oh, do we have to cut, cut cakes? 
a man have to put a ring, a wedding ring on his wife's finger, and the bride has to put a, a ring on her on husband's finger, which is from the Christian. Because in Christianity, this is what they believe, and they said, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and forever together. So that's why they put the ring. As Muslims, we don't pay attention to this. We just do it because they're doing it. Because this is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. You will follow them blindly. You will not ask questions. In Islam, the husband would pay the dowry of his bride. And he would go get married. And he would pay this young lady a gift. But because we follow the culture of other people nowadays, in some cultures, the bride will pay the groom. Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, وَآتُنِّسَا صَدَقَتُنَّ نِحْلَ And give women their due dowry. But we say, no. The people that we live with, the women pay. Their women pay. So our women have to pay also from following non-Muslim. And what really sad is, especially uh, for those of us who live in the West, we see Muslims adapting every negative behavior, ritual of the kuffar. Men and women intermingling. We say, well, everybody's doing this is how civilized people do in weddings, in congregations, in they go drink like the kuffar. They dance, they go to nightclubs like them. They behave like them in every negative aspect. But subhanallah, for some reason, they don't think good things that they have. And by the way, the Christian and the Jew, they do have a lot of good things. And we can never deny this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسِ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ do not deprive people their rights. Do not belittle their rights. Look, when you are meeting with a Canadian, I live in Canada, we from Canada. When you're meeting with them, and he says to you, I'll be there 9 o'clock, then he will be there 9 o'clock. We did not adopt that behavior, but we adopt from him a behavior like celebrating Christmas, having a girlfriend, listening to music. We adopt that negative behavior, but not the good quality that he has. When one of the Canadian people, he says, I'll do this, he will do it. But Muslims don't do that all the time because we left the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we don't follow these kuffar and take from them that which is good. But every negative behavior is there. It's ajeeb. Again, it's very disturbing to see that we only inherit from them the negative things and not the good things. In a very short story, I'll tell you this story sometimes because our behavior will try to be like you know, like these people, we try to imitate like them. And at the same time, they're looking at us and they're saying, what is wrong with these people? You know, we try to, you know, speak like them, especially the young people, hey, yo, what's up? And, and they don't realize, this kafir, this non-Muslim is looking and watching you. He's saying, what are you doing? This is not your culture. This is not what your faith is telling you. And one of the new Muslims that I met, I said to him, how do you accept Islam? He said, I watched two Muslims living Islam, how Islam should be lived. He said, they were my co-workers and we would work together, but they would always stop everything for the time for Salah and they go perform the Salah. When the time of Jum'ah comes, they will leave the work and they will perform Salat al-Jum'ah. When they're eating, they don't eat alone. 
they eat together. When they see one another, they greet with one another. When they meet, they meet with a smile. When one of them is in need of something, the other one rush to serve that one. He said, sometimes we will go together and eat outside. And Muslim, these two Muslims would fight over who's going to pay for lunch. And my people, he said, my own father, he will say, when we eat, well, pay for yourself. You're old enough to do that. You're old enough to pay for yourself. You're old enough to do that. He said, I loved the manners of the Muslims. He said, because of that, I went to them, I said, guys, gentlemen, I really don't know what you believe. I don't know what you are, but I would like to be like you. I just want to be like you. And he said, I accepted Islam because they told me what we do is Islam. No culture mix, no personal mix, no adapt things from other cultures. No, they were living pure Islam and just living that was the reason why that person accepted Islam. In our brothers in Indonesia and Malaysia, see, Muslims never went there to conquer that land with weapons and army and commanders and no. Muslim businessmen went and they just lived Islam. They didn't give that one say, we got, you have to accept Islam, otherwise we'll not buy and purchase from you. No, they just lived Islam. And the people who were living there, when they saw the attitude, the behavior, the conduct, the manners of these people, they said, this is what we want. And that's how Islam is spread. They have the largest Muslim population in the Muslim land, the Muslim world. And we did not conquer that land with power and, weapon and weapons and armies. No, just some few individuals lived Islam in that land. So, ikhwati fillah. If you care about Islam, if you care about this deen, don't try to water down Islam, try to imitate these people. Try to be like them, but live Islam. And inshallah, we will continue with this subject. Soon be idnihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next episode. Aqulu ma tasma'oon, wa astaghfirullah liku fa astaghfiruh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.